hello and welcome to this tutorial so today we are going to talk about mathematics in LaTeX so without wasting time I'm going to create a new file so click on the new file icon then I'll save it as math.tech okay all right so once I have this I want to introduce you to the wizard okay so go to the wizard option on the menu bar and then go to quick start okay so from here we can choose the type of class we, we want so we have article report any of them so I'm just going to go with article and the paper I'm going to go with two side and then the typeface size I'm going to leave it to 10 a4 paper encoding is UT, UTF-8 and then the author ctec uh, i dot so i dot T solution and the title I'm going to leave it as math in LaTeX. All right, so make sure you check this geometry package and the arms package is already checked. And then let's click OK. So you can see some 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 of the things have already been written for us. Let's quickly go through them. So we have the document class with extra parameters. We have um, the input encoding and then these three are for write, writing mathematical equations in LaTeX okay so they have already been imported for us and then we know about the geometry package we also know about the author and the title right so I'm just going to call the make title right and then let's talk about mathematics in LaTeX so in LaTeX there are basically two modes in LaTeX Okay, so that means there are two ways we can write mathematical equations. One is the inline mode and one is the display mode. So, so inline and the display. Display mode. Okay, so the difference between these two is with the inline mode, we use it when we want to write an equation which also involves some kind of sentence and then the display mode we use it for a standalone um, equation so I want to quickly demonstrate this by writing writing them actually so let's see how we do this so I'm going to use the quadratic equation as an example so I'm going to go like the quadratic formula takes the form the form and then I'll bring dollar sign so the dollar sign is used in the inline mode okay so it means you are introducing mathematics inside a sentence it's of the form then a x then the square I'm just going to do it correct so that means a x to the power 2 plus b x plus c right and then we close it with the dollar sign again so when you do this we have the quadratic formula is of the form a s squared plus b x plus c and then let's write something like and an example example is so instead of using a dollar sign there is another way of writing an inline mode and so we use the backslash and then the parenthesis so let me just close it first okay so this is it this is equivalent to the dollar sign so just actually take the one you prefer so I can also write 2x squared plus 3x plus 4 right so let's compile this and then see what we have so I'm going to hit the compile and let's give it some time okay so that is done so let's see the result all right so you can see we have the quadratic formula takes the form a squared plus bx plus c and an example is 2x squared plus 3x plus 4 okay so we wrote this inside a sentence so because of this we had to use the inline mode now let's quickly also take a look at the display mode okay so we use this for writing standalone equations so let's just see how to use the display mode so to do that we are going to have backslash and then square bracket let me just close it first and then from here we can write any equation inside this so I'm going to write something like square root of 4 so SQRT so that's how you say square root 
so square root of what four right so you make sure you put into the curly braces come outside of it and then it is equal to so it's equal to plus or minus so in latex you, you if you want to do plus or minus you use the pm so it's equal to plus or minus what two right so let's compile this and see what we get okay so you can see that one is centered to prove this let me just write some kind of sentence here so something of the square root of four is and then i've used the displayed mode so let's see whether it puts them inside the same equation inside the same line and you can see it doesn't put them on the same line so when you use the displayed mode the display mode it centers the equation and also puts it in give some kind of spacing around it all right so most of the time you use this when you're writing journals and articles and then you write standalone equations okay so that's why it's mostly used so also instead of using the square bracket i could have used an environment known as the begin and then we say equation right so inside here i can write the same thing I can write so sqrt and then square root of 4 so square root of 4 is equal to then i'll do plus or minus so backslash so we know that that's plus or minus 2 right so let's compile this and then see what we get to okay so you can see the only difference between these two is the numbering of the equation right so most of the time when you're writing articles or anything of that sort you would want to use the numbering so that you can refer to the equation otherwise if you don't want to number it all you have to do is to put star after the equation so you put star and star right let's compile it and see what we get okay so there is another way to write this actually there are three options so the other form for the display mode is the dollar sign so use two dollar sign instead of one so i can do square root of four is equal to plus or minus um two right and then i'll close it with the dollar sign so let's compare these two and see what we get okay so you can see we are getting the same result so you can use any of these it depends on your choice most of the time i go with the square bracket or the dollar sign okay but it's recommended by latex that we use the square bracket okay so now let's quickly take a look at subscripts and then superscripts okay so i think we have seen one of them that's the x to the power two right so now let's quickly take a look at how you can write subscripts and then superscripts in advance so to do this i'm also going to introduce you to one environment and then this environment is known as the equation array so i'm going to say begin and then equation array eqn array so that's equation array so what this environment allows us to do is that we can write multiple equations and then separate them using the um, line break okay so let's see how this is done so i'm just going to give you a quick review something like let's say 2x plus 5 is equal to let's say 5 it's equal to 6 and then we break the line we can come down and then write something like maybe 2x squared minus 3x plus 4 plus 4 is equal to 0 then we can break the line again we can continue and continue so let's see how this equation array works all right so you can see we have um equation that's the first one and it is numbering the equation which is 2x plus 5 is equal to this equation 1 and then <laughs> equation two and then the ones the one we have we have just pressed enter we have not actually written it but it's also trying to number that one so to prevent the numbering what you're going to do is to put star here and that should prevent it from what numbering right so you can see now we don't have any numbering here so i'm going to continue with the equation array and i'm going to introduce you to 
the subscript so I'm just give a comment subscript okay and then right here let's write something like a to the base 2 to the base ax or 2 to the base anything so let's write something like 2 and then to denote a subscript we use the underscore right so you press the shift and then the minus key on your keyboard and then you bring curly braces and then inside here anything you write is going to be an is going to be a subscript so let's write something like ax plus b right let's compile the program and see what you get and we had an error so the reason is that here we are using line breaks okay so we cannot actually leave the space here so let's clear the space and then recompile okay so you can see the error is gone right so when you are using the equation array you don't leave spaces in the equation but you really you have to rather break the lines using the line breaks okay so you can see the ax plus b is now a subscript the other thing i want to talk about is the superscript or to the power something so i'm going to give a comment like superscript right and then let's write some superscript so i'm just going to have a to the power let's say negative three right so let's compare this and see what we get okay so most of the time we were expecting that this okay i didn't use a line break here so let me just put in some line so most of the time we'll be expecting that a should be should raise the power negative three but we are rather having a to the power negative and then three to the side so in order to cure this problem we always have to use the curly braces when we want to denote a power which is of different terms all right so let's compare this and see what we get okay so you can see we have a to the power negative three right here okay so the next thing i want to talk to you about is another environment which is called the align okay so this is very useful the align environment is very useful now, let me just show you how useful it is most of the time we use it when we want to present an answer okay so let's say okay let me just declare that so we say begin and then align so if you want the equations to be um given numbers or should be numbered then you use the align but if you do not want it to be numbered then you use what align star so i'm going to choose align star from here now hit enter so let's say we want to solve this equation right we have 3x plus 4 is equal to 6 we want to solve this equation we are asked to solve this equation okay so let me just first define that equation in a display mode so you're going to be like in inline mode so solve and then just paste the equation and then that so we are going to provide a solution so we have been asked to solve that okay so there, there is nothing in our line that's why we are getting the error okay so let me just comment remove that for the first time then compile this okay so we have been asked to solve 3x plus 4 is equal to 6 so let's see how we can use our line to solve this so i'm just going to hit enter and i'm going to call the begin and i'm going to say align and i'll choose the align star because i do not want the equations to be numbered so what i'm going to do next is rewrite the equation i'm going to say 3x plus 4 is equal to 6 right and then what i want to do is go to the next line so because of that i'll use the line break come to the next line and then now the next one should be 3x is equal to what 2 so we subtract this the 4 from the 6 and then we get 2 
then we break the line again and then now we'll have x to be equal to what so the answer should be a fraction which is obviously 2 over 3 so we say frac so this is how to use fraction in LaTeX you use the backslash frac and then you press enter so the first term should go here and the second term should go there so the first term is what 2 and then the second term is what 3 so that's 2 over 3 and then let's print this out and then see the output right so I'm going to compile that okay so you see what you have and we have 3x plus 4 is equal to 6 3x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 2 over 3 but the equal, the equal signs are not well aligned so the benefits of this align is we can align some points together okay so most of the time you want to align the equal sign so if you want to do that you put the ampersand sign in front of the equal sign so this will align every equal sign in this uh, align environment so let's recompile it and see what we get so take note of the equations okay so now you can see the equal signs have been aligned beautifully right so i think i've talked a lot and the video is getting a little bit longer in the next story i will look at other parts of latex or the mathematics part of latex we'll continue looking at that and we'll also look at how to solve real world problems or our problems mathematics problems in latex using what you have just learned so if you enjoyed what i did please consider subscribing and sharing the video don't also also forget to like thanks for watching